So there's been a lot of talk about this upcoming Apple virtual reality, augmented reality headset called the Reality Pro, and this is a rumor. We don't know for sure if this will be the name, but also the price floating around for this thing has been around $3,000, so that's a lot of money. So I don't care how much of an Apple fanboy you are, a lot of people aren't going to buy this right out of the gate just because of the price tag. And actually, I think that's a good thing for Apple. And the reason for that is because I don't think Apple has to get this thing 100% right for the future of Apple's virtual reality, augmented reality plans to be successful because not that many people are going to have this. So if some things do go wrong, it's not gonna be as like something like going wrong with the iPhone where millions and millions of people are buying it on day one. But that doesn't mean that it can suck, right? I don't want it to be a failure. I'm going to be buying it, so I wanna have a good time. But also going into it, I know that this is the beginning of a very long roadmap for Apple as far as their plans to what I think eventually is going to be to get to the point to where they sell us a pair of glasses that we put on our face and we wear all day long and it gives us a lot of cool AR capabilities where it's tying into our phone and also we're getting you know driving directions and different AR pop-ups as we go throughout our day that's eventually where Apple's going to get to so this headset is really just the beginning of it and it's kind of cool to think about it because I just did something recently where I was able to reflect on my time of buying this very first generation iPhone and how that experience was because it really did feel like I was getting in on the beginning of something that was going to be special. Now, Apple isn't going to be releasing the very first virtual reality headset. There have been headsets coming from Meta and Oculus and also HTC and also Big Screen and other companies as well. But this is Apple's first major step into this category. And I think that we've seen their efforts in AR over the years, but I think that the iPhone is so good at this point, they're looking beyond the iPhone at this point. And I think these virtual reality AR type of glasses is going to be Apple's kind of really number one selling point maybe in the next 10 years where they're gonna be really pushing that even more so than the iPhone. But in order for this to be successful, they have to do some things really well here. And I think when it comes to gaming, of course, I think they're gonna have a lot of developers on board who already have apps in the App Store, but also other developers who um, are going to be able to see the, the potential of a headset like this. But the truth is, is that with this first headset, there's not gonna be that many people who have it. So these developers aren't going to be expecting to make millions and millions of dollars out the gate, at least in the first year or so. So I think Apple will be kind of funding their efforts and stuff just to kind of get their library of games up. But when, when it comes to VR, I really don't think that games is the number one selling point. I think it's the experiences. Because for me, when I'm in virtual reality, I like the social things where I'm just talking to people, I'm meeting people, I'm going inside of apps like Altspace VR, which has been shut down recently, but it was a cool app where you can go into like a comedy club and see people doing jokes or talent shows or just town halls and meditation and cool stuff like that. And I know it sounds kind of whack, but I also did things like the big screen VR application where I was actually able to go and watch a movie and especially 3D movies in a movie theater or host a movie where other people can join me. Stuff like that is really what kept drawing me back to virtual reality. And I think Apple has a, a huge advantage here versus everyone else because they have iTunes where you have access to a lot of different songs and also the, my biggest movie library is on iTunes. So I'm guessing they're gonna have a way where you'll be able to tap into that movie library and be able to host different you know, movie sessions or also just watch it in a very cool theater on your own. So yeah, movies is gonna be really big and I hope that Apple goes really full throttle at giving you a big library of 3D movies because even though 3D movies might not be a big selling point in movie theaters anymore, but once you experience 3D in a virtual reality headset because it does have two individual lenses that really does make the 3D pop and the brightness and all the colors are still there. And I, hopefully Apple really goes into the point to where they just automatically convert your library over you know, to 3D movies as an option that you already have with iTunes, um, but at the very least offer just like a 3D movie pass or something. So Apple, hopefully you do that. But Apple did something a few years ago that really led me to believe what the biggest selling point of this headset will be. And that is when they purchased a company called NextVR. So NextVR had an app that I was using on my Oculus Quest at the time. And they basically had deals with like the NBA and the WWE and they worked with different uh, musicians when they did concerts and stuff. And they set up these 180 degree, I'm hitting my microphone here, but they set up these 180 degree field of view cameras, which basically gives you a field of view like this, kind of like a visor 
closer. And because they're not doing the entire 360 degrees, you were able to get better quality, but still be able to look left, right, up and down to a certain degree and still really feel very immersed in your content. And the app was really cool. So when you did go to watch a basketball game, they put you in this auditorium and other people who were using the app had their own avatars and stuff. And you can look at people, you can talk to people, or if you wanted to be kind of isolated, you can go into your own little personal booth by yourself. But it really did feel like you were on, you know, in some floor seats or something. And then also with the WWE, you might have noticed that at one time they had these huge ring posts and in there they had some of these cameras and just the field of view that you had was really cool. So the way Apple can really leverage this and sell this product is that you can feel like you're at a concert that you can't go to. So if they work with a bunch of different music artists, Taylor Swift and whoever else, and they put up a bunch of these cameras at their concerts, that's going to be a really cool thing. And you really have to experience it for yourself. I watched like an entire Post Malone concert, an entire Tenacious D concert in virtual reality before on my Quest 2. And it's actually really good. I sat there for two hours and watched the entire thing and I had a great time. So I think Apple can do that. And also they can do the same thing with movies and different type of deals like that. And Apple already has a deal with MLS soccer. And I'm betting by next year, they're going to have cameras at these stadiums and you'll be able to like maybe buy a package where you can watch a lot of the games in virtual reality, or hopefully it comes free with the headset. But to get people to constantly use this headset day in and day out, they need to have something fresh every day to present to you to make you want to put on the headset and spend more than just five minutes in using it. So that's what I really think Apple needs to focus on. But no matter what, I think we need to see what the controllers are. There hasn't really been a lot of information as far as the controllers. I don't think they're going to do like hands only and stuff. I think that will be an option, but we need to see the controllers. We need to see the battery life as well. They're trying to make this headset super light. So we'll see how they do the whole battery setup. I think one of the rumors has been you're going to have like a battery pack on your hip and have a cable going to the headset. Um, hopefully I see some type of like MagSafe connection where you can attach the battery somewhere on the headset and then just easily swap as your battery starts to go low and stuff. But you know, there's a lot of questions about the hardware, but I think for Apple with this headset and what we've seen as far as the success of the Quest 2 is that Meta constantly, constantly updated the headset with new software features. And I thought they would hold some of these software features like hand tracking and stuff for like the Quest 3. But no, as soon as they got that thing ready, they went ahead and put it on the headset and a software update and over time that got better along with a bunch of different other software features. So I think Apple needs to see that that strategy with the Quest 2 really worked out for Meta. And so hopefully when they get new features, they don't hold them for the Reality Pro 2 headset. They go ahead and launch that for people who already have the original headset so we can use it, we can try it, we can give feedback and they can continue to make it better. So I think you can probably tell I'm excited about this headset, but I, I, I have a good feeling that when it first launches, and I think the rumor is, is around later this year, um, at the end of the year. Um, I think it's gonna be something that's gonna be mostly there, it's gonna be mostly complete, but I think it's gonna have some things, some little quirks about it that are gonna get buffed out over time. But as a reviewer, I will be pointing out the positives and the negatives, but I also will be looking at it from the approach of this is the beginning of something with Apple. I'll give them a little bit of time to make it better, um, but hopefully Apple learns from what all these other virtual reality companies have been doing, but also listen to the feedback of people who are buying this headset, which I think they will. But I, I'm willing to bet maybe in like three years or so, we'll see a lower price version of this headset. Maybe this current first generation Reality Pro headset will just drop down in price because the parts have become a little bit cheaper and also the manufacturing has become better. And then by that point, they'll have have a, a whole nother version of the headset that will have like better displays and better battery life and stuff. But until that point, this is kind of like a wait and see, but a lot of us creators will be getting our hands on this headset, whether Apple sends it to us or whether we buy it. So stay tuned for our feedback on it, but drop a comment down below about what you think about this Reality Pro headset. And you can focus on the price, but just really what are the features that will win you over that you want to see with this thing? But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.